Today, we'll be taking a look at Overwatch on the PS4 and the Potato Masher. If you don't know, the Potato Masher is a $375 PC custom built in 2014 and designed to compete with the PS4 for the rest of its life cycle. The goal is not to pick on consoles, but to show that PC gaming can be just as good or better for the same money. I borrowed this PC copy of Overwatch from my good friends in the DollarWise Gamers, so if you like budget gaming, click the link on screen and check them out. There's more info in the description, so let's get to it. As usual, a disclaimer. I normalize graphics presets to very low, low, medium, high, and very high. Overwatch has five corresponding graphics presets, but it uses different names for them. So I'm using the Ultra preset, but it corresponds to high on my scale, and I'm going to use my scale for the rest of this review. For any presets that I used, I turned the textures and texture filtering all the way up as it didn't affect performance. I also used the maximum anti-aliasing level with each preset. It doesn't affect performance in a very noticeable way, which makes sense because it also doesn't do much for the aliasing. Honestly, it's a little worthless. At 1080p in high settings, the Masher has absolutely no trouble maintaining a solid 60fps. Some of the time, the GPU usage is all the way down in the 50s and 60s, and occasionally it hits the high 80s or low 90s. Overwatch has a beautifully understated art style that blends modern effects with a simple aesthetic that scales very well on a range of hardware. The PS4 version of the game runs great and looks almost identical to the Masher. Except for lower anisotropic texture filtering, which is par for the course for most console games, the only visual area where the PS4 is noticeably worse than the Masher is shadow resolution. This is a slight difference and isn't very noticeable when you're moving, which you're doing pretty much all the time in Overwatch. Other than that, there are minor differences between the two platforms, but nothing necessarily detrimental to the overall presentation. Both have slightly too much aliasing, both have similar levels of background detail, although there are a few differences in some scenes. Not improvements necessarily, but small differences. There are also a few differences in ambient occlusion, but again, nothing that points to a superior platform. The PS4 has a more noticeable ambient occlusion on a few objects in some scenes, and the Masher has the edge in others. It's more odd than anything else, but the good news is that these are minor details and that when you're playing, you'll likely never notice any of this. But if both platforms look great, is there any advantage to playing Overwatch on the PC? Now that the visual comparison is done, I've cranked the FOV back up to 100 on the Masher and I'm using a mouse. In this section, I also run without VSync and at a faster frame rate than my recording software or YouTube support, so keep in mind that the final footage looks quite a bit choppier than it does if you're playing it yourself. Any hitching or perceived stutters are just a limitation of recording frame rates this high. Much like HDR, this isn't something where it's easy to tell a difference when you're watching it over the internet. Playing at 60fps is pretty much the minimum frame rate for any competitive shooter, but on PC you have the option of running without VSync and at higher frame rates. Besides appearing smoother if you're using an 120 or 144Hz monitor, this also greatly reduces the input lag if you're playing on a 60Hz monitor. It's the same reason why many games feel more responsive at 60fps than 30fps. Overwatch has some very good resolution scaling, which you know I like, and PS4 Pro owners are going to learn to live with. I would have liked to see some more granular adjustments than 25% set increments, but the final image looks much better than many other games that let you reduce the rendering resolution, like Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and Doom. At 1080p, medium settings, and 75% resolution scaling, the Masher sustained 90 to 150 FPS during both AI training matches and online multiplayer, and Overwatch lets you run frame rates up to 300 if you have the hardware to support it. Variable frame rates are usually distracting below 60 FPS, but above 100 FPS it's really pretty good, and it would be a perfect match for a variable refresh rate monitor. It feels smoother and much faster than a locked 60 FPS due to the reduced latency. Both the CPU and GPU in the Masher are completely maxed out at times, which is both a testament to the game's excellent optimization and a pretty good sign that the Masher's hardware is fairly well balanced. There are few games that let me max out most of the hardware and it's nice to see what it can do, although RAM usage stayed pretty low the entire time. So, higher frame rates are all well and good, but what if you have a high-end gaming monitor to go with your super budget PC? Alright guys, stick with me on this one, we're going to move pretty fast. I didn't test 720p or 900p because the Masher crushes 1080p so easily. If you have pretty much any semi-recent hardware, you'll be able to handle Overwatch at 720p or above. Now, at native 1440p, the Masher sustains 60fps at very low settings. 
Surprisingly, the game still looks great. The art style holds up well, and while there are definitely reductions in the game's visuals, it really didn't bother me all that much. Much like Team Fortress 2, Overwatch's overall art style isn't very affected by lower settings compared to most games. Moving on, at 1440p, 75% resolution scale, and medium settings, the Masher can also maintain a locked 60fps. Overwatch's resolution scaling has another benefit that I discovered in this section. The game's noticeable aliasing is almost entirely cleared up at 1440p, even at only 75% of the output resolution being rendered. However Blizzard built the res scaling, it's seriously good. The game looks smooth. Very smooth. A touch soft, and an in-game sharpening post-processing filter would have been a nice bonus, but it looks good. Still, we're not done yet. At 1440p in very low settings again, and with 75% resolution scaling, the masher can run the game between 120 and 160 FPS. That's right, if you have one of those fancy $600 Asus ROG Swift 1440p 144Hz IPS G-Sync monitors, you can go tear it up with your $375 PC. You can then hopefully reevaluate some of the ways you spend your money, but you'll be enjoying that smooth PC gameplay so much that you'll probably think it's worth it. But wait, there's more. At native 4K resolution and very low settings, the Masher can't do 60 FPS. That's understandable. GTA 5 is the only game that the Masher has been able to really play at 4K and 60 FPS at any settings without any significant compromises. It can keep the game at very playable frame rates, but it's not locked and it's not smooth. However, at 75% resolution scaling, it can lock at 60 FPS and it still looks good. If you drop the resolution scaling down to 50%, you can even bump the settings up to medium and the frame rate stays locked. Why bother running the game at 4K with 50% resolution scaling? Isn't that basically like running the game at 1080p? Well, yes, but Blizzard's excellent resolution scaling means that image is smoother than the native 1080p image with much better aliasing. It could still use that sharpening filter, but it's a definite improvement on a native 4K monitor. We're still not done though, because if you make a lot of stupid decisions like turning the settings down to very low and keeping that res scaling at 50%, you can play Overwatch at 4K between 120 and 140 FPS. Why on earth would anyone want to do this weird combination of settings and frame rates? I have no idea, but this is a PC and you can pretty much do whatever you want. If one of you asked me why I didn't test the game at a stretch 1024 by 768 in very low settings so I could run at 300 FPS and pretend this is Counter-Strike, I'm not going to respond. I feel a little bad for PS4 owners with this game. Sure, it runs and looks great on Sony's system and is certainly comparable to the best multiplayer shooters on the platform. But you don't get to run at crazy high frame rates or use a mouse or adjust your field of view. With competitive FPS games in particular, the PC platform offers so many opportunities to get killed by people who are so much better than you at a variety of interesting resolutions and frame rates with different control schemes and pretty much anything else you can dream up. For the main part of the comparison, the Masher and PS4 are identical. If you only play at 1080p and you don't like the thought of running high unlocked frame rates, then I think there's still a small edge with the PC because of the control scheme. That's somewhat open to personal preference though, so there's no clear winner between the two platforms in that regard. However, if you factor in all the extra ways you can configure the visuals or frame rate on the PC, there's a much more clear divide between the PS4 and the Potato Masher, not in visuals, but in usability and the overall experience. The PS4 has nothing to be ashamed of, and it got a great port, but for Overwatch, I'd have to pick the PC every time. If you enjoyed this video, check out the original build video or any of the other Potato Masher videos linked on screen. This project was started by the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast, so go click the link to check us out. You can support this channel and the Potato Masher project by tossing me a few bucks on Patreon. It helps me test new games quicker and better, and as a reminder, only the main reviews like this one are paid. None of the other back catalog or preview videos are paid posts. They are all free. Thank you for your support, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.